Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, to begin with, I'd like to apologize for being late several minutes. I think it's about six or seven minutes um, over time. I was, we were supposed to begin. I was supposed to begin at 1.30. And this is the first time that we're trying to put this um, program together or this recording together. Um, and uh, we ran into some uh, maybe challenges, but alhamdulillah, everything worked out. I think, I hope, everything worked out well, and we're live now, and I think we're live, and at the same time, this is being recorded for those who will not be able to tune in at this time. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking those of you who gave me feedback in the past week, um, uh, especially those of you who uh, were very generous in their feedback. Uh, I'll take all of that into consideration. Uh, and I think most of you know that I um, don't hold back my punches. Uh, if there's truth to be said, uh, if we have to speak truth to power, then we're going to do that. Uh, we're not going to hold back. We're not going to be ashamed. We're not going to be apologetic. We're not going to be defeated. And we're not going to be inferior. What has to be said has to be said, especially during these times when those who are in power and those who have the resources uh, are showing no mercy. Uh, we, with Allah's help, try to express ourselves in real time. And as almost everyone who has a thinking mind knows, the world now is full of news items uh, concerning basically two events. Um, the first one has to do with this COVID-19, the virus that has uh, spread all over the world and there's lockdowns, and there are new regulations and new laws and many restrictions and everything that you know is happening. So that's one issue that is preponderant. The other issue that is preponderant is the issue of racism. Um, what has happened in the United States has uh, opened a Pandora's box uh, in the United States, beyond the United States, and in many corners of the world. These are the two issues that we have to approach with an Islamic mind and an Islamic overview, an Islamic understanding, and an Islamic heart. Uh, let me say, uh, to, of course, we have to take into, into consideration that we are dealing with um, a time restriction here. Uh, so I'd like to begin with, with that as an introduction. I'd like to begin by saying it is comfortable and it is relaxing to be in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, within the developments of life. There's a lot of information. There's plenty of analyses. There's no end to commentators who speak about the issues of the day. So you can open up any newspaper, any magazine, tune into any mainstream media or online media or whatever. You're going to hear a lot of talk and you're going to hear a lot of opinions. Some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. Some of them are partially right. Some of them are partially wrong. And we keep on bouncing back and forth and we need an anchor. And that anchor is the information that comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Uh, let me begin by saying, uh, let me take the issue of racism first. Let me begin by saying the issue of racism is a historical issue and it's a contemporary one. Its history did not begin 400 years ago and it did not end with Abraham Lincoln or the Bill of Rights or the civil rights movement in the United States, uh, nor with uh, legislation and the other activities that wanted public opinion to believe that the population has overcome the issue of racism. The issue of racism is one of several other issues that have to do with the concentration of power and wealth. The concentration of power and wealth in a group of people, it could be a race, it could be a religion, it could be a uh, language group, a nationality, a nationalism, it could be a family, wherever you find a concentration of these two elements, power and wealth, to put it, to break it down a little more, banks and military bases. Wherever you find a concentration, a buildup, a structure of these two elements, you're going to find the problem of arrogance and the problem of oppression. Those who have control of wealth, assets, finances, and have control of militaries, weapons of mass destruction will begin to behave in a certain manner. I want you to think just for a moment, think of a world that has no power in it and no wealth in it. Human beings, you and I and 7.5 billion other people in the world, or more now, no one has any wealth and no one has any power. Would we have the problems that we are dealing with today? All sorts of problems. Political, economic, so societal, family problems, all of these no one has any wealth and no one has any power. How are we going to have... Pro take, take your family unit. Father, mother, husband, wife, daughters, sons, grandchildren, uncles and aunts, etc. No one has any wealth and no one has any power. How can there be any problems? It's my word, it's your word, it's the other's word. It's just our points of view, our opinions, and we're going to have to make the best out of them. In the absence of coercion, in the absence of threats, in the absence of poverty, in the absence of need and want, those don't exist because there's no money and there's no guns. None of that exists. But we don't live in a world like that. The world we live in has, among other things, it has these two very destructive com combined elements. The military and the financial class. 
And here's where our problems begin. In today's world, they speak to us about the uh, currencies losing their values. Even the dollar, the mainstay of the financial world today, the dollar itself, there's talk right now out in the open. Hitherto, this talk and these discussions were behind closed doors, but now it's out in the open. The dollar forecasters foresee the dollar is going to lose its value. To whom? As, you know, they speak, okay, the United States right now has gone up to 25 or 27 trillion dollars in debt. To whom? Have you ever had, have you ever heard a broadcaster, a commentator, uh, a philosopher, an ideologue, a politician, anyone who's out there who has some type of authority? Have you ever heard of anyone telling us, to whom do we owe this money? I mean, it's the first question that should come to anyone's mind. To whom do we owe this money? To skip those types of details, all of the footsteps are going to lead to those who have concentrated their military bases and their banks. They have weapons of mass destruction. They have the International Monetary Fund. They have the World Bank. And so they have the rest of the populations of the world, the victims of the policies that we are suffering from. Let's, let's take refuge in Allah's words and direction and try to put our finger on the source of the problem. The source of the problem actually goes back to our psychology. The source of the problem is in ourselves. Before we had all of these banks and all of these military bases, the banks have a poison called riba in them, and the military bases have a poison called weapons of mass destruction in them. Before all of that happened, we should listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand this whole issue at its source. And the whole issue at its source is an issue of discrimination. Prejudice, bigotry, segregation, divisiveness. It's a psychological problem. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human race, he told the heavenly company, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. And, which means, I am rendering on earth successors, a successor, those who are going to be responsible and responsible in the sense that they will be receiving directives and direction uh, instructions and teachings from on high and they will live with that responsibility at that point in the formulation of this divine will, as it were, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered al-malaika to 
pay respect to this new form of life that Allah is creating. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ And bear in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said to al-malaika, pay respect, even prostrate yourselves to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا And they did. إِلَّا Iblis, Except for Iblis. Abba, he refused, was stakbar, and he was arrogant, وكان من الكافرين, and he was one of those who were in denial of Allah's command. And then Allah asks him, in Surah Sad, before Allah asks him, Allah declares, إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِّنْ طِينٍ I am to create a human being out of clay or mud. This did not make sense to Iblis. How can entities, living entities, created out of the substance of fire, let's call them firebrand beings, how can they respect someone who is inferior, someone who's created out of mud? That doesn't make sense. This is the area where a shaitan, the accursed Satan, plays his role. And here is a, this is a very interesting area that many of us are not conscious of. We have temptations. And we have urges to do the wrong thing. But we may ask, where does this come from? Why do I think about or why do I entertain the notion of doing something wrong? And to answer that, there are two areas that we have to look at. Our own nafs, another ayah in the Quran, this is where we feel relaxed. We go to Allah, we don't go to a philosopher, we don't go to some medical expert, we don't go to human beings to get an answer. We go to our creator, the one who knows exactly who we are. And he says, Inna nafsa la amaratum bisu." The, uh, the human self has a, an urging tendency toward what is bad. It's a tendency that's there that keeps on pushing to do the wrong thing. This is inside of us. It has nothing to do with a shaitan. That's a proclivity in us. On the other hand, there's a shaitan who works on this proclivity and who suggests things to us. So there's something internally so to speak, and there is something external that interferes in our internal thoughts. And that something that is exterior to outside of us, not within us, makes its way into our thoughts.
where do we, how how can we detect this? How can we how can we get a feel for what's the difference between these two? Okay, let's let's try to give an example here. Um, a person, an, a normal person, whatever his religion, her conviction, whatever, has this feeling that they ought to do something that is wrong, that they want to do something that is wrong. And it keeps on visiting them. They'll feel it in this morning. They'll feel it this evening. They'll feel it today. They'll feel it tomorrow. They'll feel it the day after. It keeps on bugging them. This is a nafs al-amara bisu. It, it presses on you in the area of determination in you to do the wrong thing. That wrong thing, there's a lot of things under that wrong thing included therein. And nafs al amara bisu. Okay, so we can get a sense of, okay, I want to do this, but I know it's wrong, so I don't do it today. Then I, I get the same feeling tomorrow and the same thing after that, and it keeps on bugging me until I either conquer it with my free will or it subverts me to doing what is wrong. Where is it? Where is the shaitan in all of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, once again, we refer to Allah. I'm not saying, you know, we go to this person, that person, try to... These are not sub... Uh, uh, Shaitan, we can't put him in a laboratory to figure out how he works. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us for our detective potential, Satan himself said when he disobeyed Allah, لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ I will ambush them, meaning Allah's subjects. I will be in ambush for them on your asirat al-mustaqeem. There's, there's an expression in English that says, the devil is in the details. The, the correct understanding for this is, a shaitan is to be found when a person is on a sirat al-mustaqeem. He's waiting for you as you're on your way to Allah. لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ So where can you expect to encounter the suggestions, the whispers, the internal thoughts of a shaitan? It's not in a brothel. It's not in a bar. That's where your nafs al-amara is taking you the wrong way. You can expect to encounter a shaitan when you are pursuing Allah's orders, guidance, and instructions. He's going to try to interfere right there and then. So, I know I began with speaking about what is a social, a political, an economic issue, but then I said the roots of all of this is psychological. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Allah is speaking to this Satan, this evil uh, force that is located more in the thoughts of men than in the emotions of men. And nafs al-ammara is in our emotions. Shaitan is in the evil thoughts that are rationalized to appear as if they are virtuous thoughts. 
And that was his ex- explanation. مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ Allah says to this shaitani being, what was it that made you not res- show respect to Adam as I ordered you to do? مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ Shaitan's answer was not an emotional answer. It was strictly a rational answer. And these are his words. Once again, this is not a history book. This is not speculation. This is not theorizing. This is the fact and the truth. قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ He said, I'm better than he is. You created me out of the essence of the fire, and you created him out of the essence of dirt, more or less. This is the the response that he gave. So, what, uh, can you art logically? Is there an argument for that? And this is where the the racists and racism has to do with asabiya. And Asabiya covers the area of, you could, you could say, the same thing applies to sectarians. The same thing applies to jingoistic nationalists. The same thing applies to uh, gender discrimination, etc. All, the, the, all of these are a form of what may be called the plurality of the ego. Asabiya is... The human plurality of the ego. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My honorable subjects, you have no authority over them. So it is we. It's in it's in within our willpower to succumb to ideas, wayward ideas, parading as ideological or supremacist ideas and ideologies, or we can check them, reverse them, and defeat them. We can't do this with one set of supremacist ideas battling against another set of supremacist ideas. There is a, uh, a quote in the literature of Al Hadith Al Qudsi that's the information coming from Allah that, to put it in a short sentence, is not an ayah and not a hadith. It's be, it's between an ayah and a hadith, referred to as al-hadith al-Qudsi, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you, Allah speaking to people, to us, If you believe that I cannot see you, watch you, observe you, take notice of everything that you are doing, if you think that I can't see you, then your iman is malfunctioning. But if you think and believe that I can see you, then why do you not consider me as someone watching you? This brings us, and I think right now... um, (laughs) A lot of things to say here, but 
uh, as is usual, I like to um, to end, even though I know I have much more to say on this subject. And uh, once again, I'd like to have your feedback uh, from this first presentation so we can improve future presentations. Uh, but we have some developments coming from our inferiority. I don't say this in a derogatory manner. I don't say this to demean anyone. I only say this because if we were two, million, two billion obedient Muslims following, listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following what he is telling us, we would not be in the, at the receiving end of bombs and extortion. Bombs from the military and extortion from the banks. Why, in, in, why should we have in the prisons in the Arabian Peninsula, the birthplace of the Prophet, the birthplace of Islam, why should we have prisons that right now are filled with committed Muslims? Why don't we have it within ourselves to think about those who have power as they themselves being the inferiors? Why can't we have this as a shared conviction held to by two billion Muslims. Um, so I think um, our thoughts should be elevated and they can't be elevated by listening to a philosopher or by listening to an ideologue, unless these philosophers and these ideologues are entrenched in the Quran and they extract their ideas and their conclusions from the Quran. Um, I, I feel the weight that bears heavily down on all of us because the many of us are not able to have the strength that goes into our psychology that will, at the end of the day, bring about the victory of the force of morality over the force of materialism. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And inshallah, we will be meeting or uh, catching up with each other at the same time next week if Allah gives us the endurance and the uh, determination to meet up again. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.